Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be introducing you to spawn waiting within our game. So at the moment we have got items being randomly spawned within our scene, however the chance of each of those objects being spawned into the scene is exactly the same. So the same chance of an obstacle being spawned is the same as a magnet. So with things like power-ups like magnets and coins, you want them to be a little bit rarer and have a less chance of those spawning within your scene. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Also things like box obstacles that you can't avoid, you don't want those to spawn in as much either because you are going to come across times where you're going to have three of them in at once. So what we're going to be doing is adjusting some of our co uh, code within our master tile blueprint to determine with a little bit more control what items should be spawned. So the way we're going to do this is open up our master tile. Within here you can see the code that we've got already and for this all we're doing is just getting a random integer in range and then spawning in a item according to an ID but the chance of each of those numbers being spawned in is exactly the same, it's entirely random. Now the new system is still going to be random, however there is just going to be a little bit more chance of some objects being spawned over the others. And the way we're going to set this up is really straightforward. So what I'm going to do for now is delete all of the code that we've got for lane 1 and 2. And then for lane 0, what we're going to be doing is deleting this switch on integer node as we're not going to need this anymore. We're also going to be deleting the random integer in range node as well because we're not going to be needing that either. Now with our get world transform and our lane zero, move that down to the bottom. Make sure you scale up your comment box and you want to make space for our new code which is going to be going in here. Now what we're going to be doing as soon as it's told to spawn an obstacle, we are going to tell it to first and foremost run a branch node. Now with this, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using a couple of branch nodes to check to see whether or not it's within a certain range. And that range is going to be going from 0 to 1. So if we have the range going from 0 to f uh, 0 to 0 0.5, that is going to take up 50% of that range and therefore we're going to have a 50% chance of spawning in that object. You'll see exactly what I mean by that in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a random float in range. Now the reason why I'm using a float as opposed to an integer is because with this you can have the decimal values and it's going to allow me to go from 0 to 1 and have the decimal places in between. Now with this, what we're going to be doing with the branch node is searching for the in range float node. Now what we're going to be doing is hooking up the return value into there. With the minimum and the maximum of the random float, this is going to be set to 1. Now. For the first item, with the pipes, we want there to be a solid, let's say, 40% chance of one of these spawning. We want this to be one of the more popular obstacles to spawn within the scene. The way we're going to do this is by going from 0 to 0 0.4. If that is true, with this random float in range, we're going to tell it to spawn in an obstacle for the pipe. If that is false, we are then going to tell this to do another branch. And then with this, what we're going to be doing is checking to see if that is within the range that we're looking for. So hook up your return value to your condition, your original random float in range to your value. And this time, the next obstacle is the box. Now you don't want this to be too common because it is going to be something that can very quickly kill the player if there is three of them. So the range for this what we're going to do is 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. So what you've actually got there is a 10% chance of this box being spawned. And we're going to hook this up into our box. Now what you do need to remember when you're doing this, your maximum value or your maximum range needs to go from 0 all the way up to 1. So try and break these down into the chance that you're after. So if that's true, 
it's going to spawn the box. If it's false, what we're going to do is move this into another branch node, which is just simply going to have another float range in there. Value again is going to be our random float. And this one, if it is true, is going to be the coin pickup. Now you want this to be relatively common. So what we're going to do is go from 0 0.5 to 0. Point, let's say 0 0.9. So there's going to be a 40% chance of a coin spawning. And that is all good. And then lastly, we're going to have one more of these and one more branch node going out from the false into the execution pin here. Condition should be going into there. And then lastly, grab that value for the random float and hook it up in there. For the minimum and maximum, we are going to be using 0 0.9 to 1. So there you have got a 10% chance of our magnet spawning. And that is the whole range, so it doesn't matter too much if our false is not hooked up into anything. So just to reiterate here, exactly what we've done is when it's first told to fire off the spawn obstacles, what it's being told to do is check to see what this value is. Now it's going to be going from zero to one. And with this, for each of the ranges, we've used this to control the probability of something popping up. The larger the range, the more chance there's going to be of an item spawning and you're going to be able to see this. So starting off with the first item, which is the obstacle, and you can match this with the condition and the return value. You can see we're going from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.4, which is a 40% chance. Next up, you've got the box, which is a 10% chance, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. And then next up, the coin pickup, 0 0.5 to 0 0.9, which is a 40% chance. And lastly, the magnet, which is a 10% chance over here. If you want your magnet to be less common, what you can do is set the minimum on this to 0 0.95 and set your maximum on your coin to 0 0.95 as well. And that way you are gonna be getting less magnets. Now for actually spawning this onto the other lanes, this code is really reusable. So all we're gonna be doing is just copying this code moving it along and just pasting it over twice just like that and lining it over and then all we're going to be doing down here is making sure we've got lane zero on the left the second lot of code use lane one to get a reference and hook this into your target for your get world transform they all plug into the same thing so that's going to work and then lastly your lane two hook this up into your target. You're going to want to comment all of these. So we've still got lane, lane zero. So lane zero is on the left, lane one, drag that comment box so it fits the whole space and just do the same thing for lane three or lane two rather. And then we are good to go. And all we need to do now is just join these up so they all work. And the way we're going to do this is by simply just joining them up to the branch. So from here, hook this up, this up, this up. So from all of these spawn nodes, just join them on to the next lane going into that first branch node. And then the same thing over here as well on the lane one, hook each and every one of these execution pins up to this branch. And what you do want to do is just try and keep your code as clean as possible, making sure it's very easy to read, very easy to understand, as it can quite easily turn into a big spaghetti mess when you've got loads of code. But this looks pretty understandable to me. So let's go ahead and compile this, press play. And what we should see is a track which is a bit more like an endless runner. So there is more of the pipes being spawned more of the coins being spawned and these magnets they are being spawned a lot less often so that way you can go a long distance without them you're not going to be picking lots and lots of them up 
Now with this system, you guys are going to be able to control just how much of a chance of each of these objects there is to spawn so you can play around with this. It is entirely up to you, but for now you do have a little bit more control over the random spawning of our objects. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and you now have that extra control that I've talked about with spawning your objects. But for now guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.